Hallo? Oké, okay. welkom everyone. Episode 11 of Sake. Uh, 13 if you include the first two Python evenings. Um, and again, streaming live to Finland. So, hello Finland. Uh, Moi, I should uh, say. Um, and I think we have an amazing schedule tonight again. Uh, thanks to Yelmer for uh, mainly organizing uh, and uh, arranging uh, the speakers. Uh, a bit more technical than last time, which had also some uh, marketing uh, marketing talks. Um, but uh, we have uh, Excel for programmers. How technical can, uh, can it get? Uh, automatic text summarization, Node.js on fire, um, and uh, online password hacking, and, uh, and much more. So uh, we'll not wait too long before we start. And we have a new, well, keynote speaker, I might say. Uh, um, our new uh, CEO, Digital, almost half a year now? Or? Three months. Three months. Oh, it feels like a half a year. And in those three months, what do you think of like our technical organization? Are you all techers or? <laughs> <laughs> Techies? Some CDNA, uh, but uh, okay. we consider them technical as well. Uh, well, we need to become a real technical company. I think we uh, look, as a head of digital, you would expect technical uh, technology to be on uh, a real pedestal for the company. I think we're doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I think we can also do things better. Uh, and whether it's technology or whether it's, for me, I call it more product, how we design things, how we, uh, and the usability around things, especially also in the mobile space, I think we can make some good steps and probably also need a bit of focus on our main businesses. So okay. I might touch on that as well like yeah. in the first 10 minutes. And how technical are you yourself? Uh, do you have any programming experience? And what's, what's your favorite programming language? Yeah, you asked me that. Uh, gee, uh, guys, I, uh, so I went to uh, university at 87, uh, studied chemistry. So I did a little bit of programming in physics, but very little. I actually don't even know what the language was. Uh, I think the closest I got to programming was probably C++. Uh, uh, Python, you called. Uh, this is, I think, a language that people use in statistics, in uh, algorithmic uh, kind of activity. Uh, I've never really programmed myself. Uh, and I think if I started my university career five years later, I probably would. So that's where certainly you can, uh, you can ask me hard questions, and I probably won't be able to answer them. But I had maybe. Um, so I, I've been in digital 15 years, uh, more than half of my career, certainly the last part, I've always had technical teams under me. Uh, so at least uh, from a managerial perspective and being close to technology, I had big technology teams in the various, well, in Expedia, where it was my previous job, in the B2B side of the business, uh, B2C in various parts. So very familiar at least with the kind of language and not so much the programming language, but the way to engage with tech. Uh, for me, product is a key function that sort of sits between tech and the business. Uh, running in Scrum, running in Agile development methodology is very used to that. Uh, certainly been using that in the various roles that I had uh, over the last probably six, seven years. So that's how as much techy as much tech as I, I am. Okay, well, that sounds, uh, sounds good. Um, so um, this is our bi-monthly uh, tech, uh, tech event. We're really happy that you're here to, uh, to kick it off. So uh, a round of applause for uh, Arthur Hoffman. Thank you. Well, it feels really good to be here. I'll speak in English is the uh, idea, also given that it's going to be streamed to Finland. Um, are you all Sanama people, or who's, who's from Sanama? Okay, that's quite a few non-Sanama. All in the technology area, yeah? Okay, so, so let's uh, see. Um, look, I, I brought this book, maybe you uh, I have started to deep dive very seriously with a core team uh, into mobile. And if you open the, the first page, and you think, why mobile first? Well, 
It basically gives you uh, three answers. Uh, it prepares you for the explosive, explosive growth and new opportunities uh, emerging on mobile today. It forces you to focus and prioritize your products by embracing the constraints inherent in mobile design and allows you to deliver innovative experiences by building on new capabilities native to mobile devices and modes of use. So I only have 10 minutes. I was not allowed to bring slides. So I'll um, but I'll talk mainly about mobile because I really think we have a massive opportunity there, like many other players in the industry. Uh, but I really want us to take a leapfrog step into mobile. And it's not because we're not doing nothing in mobile or because we're not having great business models in mobile. And the two biggest ones are Noodle.nl in Holland and Ilta Sanamat, also a new site uh, in Finland. Uh, they uh, make up 85 to 90 percent of the total revenue. And there also lies the problem. We need to diversify more. And certainly, if you look inside those two new sites, uh, we're very reliant on one source of revenue being display in still a very traditional way, uh, sort of banners uh, in cubicles, but not something uh, that em embraces sort of the latest techniques and incorporates some of the new things like video uh, much more prominently or native advertising or even commerce. So I'm really uh, uh, pushing hard on the mobile angle because I really think it helps us in the rest of digital as well. If you read the book, if you, the way, if you embrace mobile as a thinking, uh, because of the limitations, the constraints of the device, it really brings you down to the core of what matters around the business model and being on the forefront of design and using the different facets that a mobile device uh, gives you, geotargeting, positioning, uh, a different way to interact with something. And I think it will really help us on the web as well. So and not only and we're, are we looking at monetizing a new or Ilzan Sanama more and better and diversifying these revenue streams. But it, we also want to really pivot, take uh, some of the existing web assets, the big ones, like Kieskeurig here, uh, Fashion Chick, uh, Startpagina, into a really mobile first zone. Um, also, because our strategy in going international hasn't really delivered the results we were looking for. And on one hand, that's a bit disappointing. On the other hand, it gives you an opportunity to do something different. And that different, I think, really ought to be in mobile. Uh, if you look at the uh, traffic, we're getting 60% of our total traffic on smartphones and tablets, yet it only represents 10% of the total revenue. Now, why is that? It's because advertisers don't understand yet the mobile space. And the first thing an advertiser would ask you, where can they click? And I need to have a landing page in mobile where uh, typically, certainly on a new site, uh, new.nl, you want to keep the user on the site. They can engage with that ad. They can engage with a video where there's an advertisement, or they can read native advertising. Or even if you want to, they can buy something. But you want to keep them on that site for as long as possible. And if they interact with that piece of advertising, uh, in, in broad terms, then that's an engagement factor. With an engagement, you want to train your advertisers that it's a good thing. So not only focus on that click, but focus much more on an engagement factor. So that's some of the language that we need to speak, some of the training that we need of our advertisers to be able to comprehend this and think about the world a little bit differently. Across device, we see that 50% of users these days, you probably all do it yourself, you walk into a store, uh, an electronic store, and you're there, and you use your handset to say, hmm, I'll look at the TV, can I get it somewhere cheaper? And we need to be playing into that space. And we need to be able to understand that's how people use a mobile device, and then also go back to maybe making the purchase on a desktop, on a laptop, or uh, the traditional sort of web way. And for us to be able to measure across device, or at, le at least understand that some people have browse here but purchase there, we can also drive our marketing and our total experience better. And one of that's one of the reasons why we uh, are pushing hard for a cinema account, 
not because we know that people like to log in. Consumers typically don't want to log in. It's a hassle. Uh, you might forget your password, you, you forget your username. But if you make it seamless and you offer something that they feel is attractive, and you give them something more, or you give them a good reason to log in, and once you have that unique identifier, it makes it a lot easier in app, mobile web, as well as on the site, the desktop itself, to track the user and therefore target much more, uh, a much better your solutions, personalize it more, uh, recognize that people have, have a multi-device behavior and therefore drive your marketing more precisely. Um, if you look now, for example, I've seen some of the stats uh, just uh, the other week. Uh, mobile web on new.nl, our fill rate for advertising, and that's our main source of revenue. And so we have to have advertisers on board to make money. The rest is free for users. So uh, in that particular space, uh, we have, we're solely reliant in terms of revenue from our advertisers. And the fill rate on mobile web is around, well, it's high. Uh, we pay, pretty much sell our inventory except for, mo for video where there's still some friction in the system. But if you look in app, it's very low. It is actually uh, 80, 70% is unsold in a top title like new.nl. Now, why is that? Because it's still difficult for us to convince advertisers to buy there and to have formats that work and to talk a new language. Uh, so that's one of the opportunities we see. And look, for me, tech is, is, is digital. We cannot do anything without technology. And I think uh, uh, the combination of using content, using the creativity, the ideas th that this place have, uh, because me coming in after three months, this place is full of creativity, it's full of ideas. Uh, no matter where you go, if it's Magritte, Libelle, everywhere around the company, if you enter into that space, they are full of ideas, everywhere. The trick is always to make it happen. The trick is to test these things. Quick, the trick is to quickly validate it to have a platform where you can test, validate, iterate, measure these ideas very quickly such that you know you're onto something. And I think that's a groove where even on uh, the pure play digital side of things, we have to move faster, we have to do that a lot more. And believe it or not, I got an email last week from Fashion Chick saying, we run our first A-B test ever. And I was shocked, Fashion Chick? This is sort of the, uh, our most e-commerce uh, digital uh, brand have, and it's only now starting to run A-B tests. So you can look at it two ways, obviously, glass half full for half empty. Uh, I look forward as an opportunity to say, oh my God, <laughs> we now can start testing. And you've been driving this business based on experience, on gut feeling, good on you, because you've uh, uh, you achieved amazing results. But we, as a business, we have to be able to do a B test, test things, iterate on, on them very, very quickly, and do that obviously a lot. So for me, technology is crucial. Um, had a lot of discussions with Peter behind the scene on how do I get closer to technology? Uh, because I'm missing a little bit the, the layer between the different brands and me in terms of talking tech, and not so much because I want to get into the detail, but more understanding uh, what are we investing where? What are the opportunities? What are the, the points of friction that we need to take away? What are the issues? And as a result, be able to prioritize based on what we think has the biggest bang for its buck and drive the biggest results. So that's coming. Uh, that I do call it a roadmap where we can prioritize and better know what's going on across the portfolio. In fact, you're just standing up. Ten minutes are done. Yes, that's correct. Um, Thank you. And we have a lovely next speaker. <laughs> so while Feline is setting up, um, some questions for Arthur. I think it's more the letter. Please repeat uh, the question uh, for the oh, so for so Finland. Yeah, I think the question is, what's the hardest thing to get real traction in mobile monetization? Is it technology or is it sales? 
I think it's more, uh, not to criticize sales, it's more the education of our advertisers that it's a different space and you need to think about it differently and bring results that connect uh, to their, the, way they, uh, the kind of results they're looking for. Because you can overload them with a vast amount of information, but ultimately you need to understand what works for them, what are they looking for. So I think it's the, it's the creation of the market and where sales need to lead, with obviously help from technology. Uh, but there's also elements in the system that we know, for example, video on new.nl. And maybe now we've taken away some of those friction points, but we had difficulty in measurability. We had difficulty in serving those videos. We had difficulty in getting all the fill rates up. That's more a technology issue that we know of rather than a sales issue because video is, sh as I hear from the sales team, shit hot. So it can sell everywhere. We just need to be able to uh, know where we put it, be able to measure it, and bring those results back to our advertiser to say this is what we're doing. Uh, but in general, I think it's more the commercial side. Another question. No questions? Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, have fun today. Thank you.